My father... Okay, I'm sorry. I just had to. Anyway, my father used to work in... I guess you'd call it like a shelter. And this would be about 30 years ago. He... There were these meetings. Some of them would last for hours. And before he suggested it, before he made this suggestion, they would smoke during these meetings. In spite of the fact that one of the people who were at these mandatory meetings was asthma asthmatic. I hope I'm not ruining the dramatic impact of that by my poor pronunciation. I'm Danish and the whole th thing is... yes. Asthma, you know, that... and, and that, that kind of wasn't enough for them to by themselves think maybe Maybe we shouldn't smoke for hours in a room with so many people and so little room. Just anyway, he made it he made it a rule that they couldn't smoke during these meetings. And they hated him for years after that. One of them may never have forgiven him. Eight years later, when the other guy resigned, it was pretty clear to my father that the man still hated him. And, yes, this was a while ago, but I think I mean, yes, 30 years, that is only so much. Back then, everybody knew. Everybody who were willing to accept it knew that smoking would kill not only you, but those around you. There was no excuse to be surprised by this. And I think it just has to do with the mindset of a lot of smokers. I'm not looking to demonize the bunch of you. I'm just saying I have an idea that some of you might think like this. Once again, these are the people who do not very willingly at least give up smoking even if they are in close proximity to other people. The people who don't think about the fact that what they are doing is dangerous to their environment. I have no problem with smokers as just, you know, on principle. There's no... not at all. You know, I have friends who are smokers. The people I'm referring to are the people who just don't really seem to accept the accuracy of the many, many, all the research, all the, all the proof that all points in the same direction, that it is dangerous. There was a I guess a newspaper article some years back where the writer was surprised that she, she asked a friend of hers not to smoke inside and the friend thought that it was just a matter of the smell and she said well can't you just you know air out afterwards and the writer perplexed, asked, or said, well, it's not the smell, it's the danger. And this seemed to take the smoker completely by surprise. Oh. And the writer ended the article 
with a bit of a rhetorical question that I've always kept in my mind ever since. This is six or seven years ago that we're talking. If if it is dangerous just to be around smokers, then what does that make the smokers? I can appreciate that it is an addiction. There is no real... And whether you consider that as, you know, a horrible, horrible term, that is just the truth. Nicotine is addictive. I can appreciate that it can be very difficult to abstain from something you're addicted to. However, I mean, some of the people we're talking about with, you know, in the meeting room were chain smokers. That's why, you know, they, they couldn't imagine going without it for anywhere near that long. You know, they would constantly be smoking and when you get to that level, you can keep just feeding the addiction and just keeping it at the level it's at, but that's the reason that you feel that you need that is because your body has gradually, excuse me, grown used to the amount and it now expects this amount. It becomes like the natural. This isn't really limited to, you know, nicotine. I mean, maybe I've never had a real addiction, but I have always quite liked to eat and drink, and I love sweets. And when I was younger, I would sometimes eat only the you know, w without any kind of holding back. I would just stuff my face with whatever I wanted to, whatever I wanted at that time, whatever tasted the best. You know, regardless of how much fat there was in it, or if it was at all good for me. And when I stopped, yes, I do sometimes want to eat something good. I do try to make my daily food pretty tasty so that I don't think too much about it. I now have no problems with my weight and I don't truly miss it and I certainly don't feel every day like I'm missing something vital and this is because I lessened the intake. I got used to less and less the way I had before gotten used to more and more. It can be done and it is the only way it gets better. If you have to light a cigarette just to feel normal, if you are chain smoking and for anyone who doesn't as, as far as I understand, the definition of chain smoking literally is that when one cigarette is done, they will light the next one with the one they have just smoked. Literally, there is no... There is no break between the two. If you're doing that, then... And, and just daily. I mean, that just isn't good, and I mean, I can only speak from experience, but I wasn't terribly happy when I had to, felt like I had to use that much just, you know, every day. You know, if you don't eat what you love, all the time, then it'll mean much more when you do. There is... You, you get used to it if you just...
constantly have it, and it'll stop having an impact. It'll stop being interesting or special. You'll just get used to it, you know? I mean, I used to drink more soda than pretty much anything else. I would drink soda when I was thirsty. Now I drink water when I'm thirsty, so when I have soda or even juice, it's a party in my mouth, you know? It's awesome, and I don't miss it at all. I don't miss having, feeling like I have to do, to take that much just to, for it to feel normal. And while I can understand that if it is a physical addiction, your body might feel like you do need that level when you start to lessen. Remember that you weren't always, you didn't always feel like you needed that much, and you can come to a point where you don't need as much. One extremely important thing in lessening an addiction is willpower, determination. That was how I stopped eating so much, and no, it isn't the same as fighting off an addiction to, you know, a something that literally makes, you know, tells your brain, this feels good. But anyone who has changed their diet from eating a lot to eating much, much less can tell you that it does still, I mean, early on, your body is going to keep expecting the same amount of food. So, yeah, but any kind of addiction is going to harm you. Definitely, mostly, psychologically, sometimes also physically. I would say that cigarettes might not impact you terribly much psychologically, but And no matter how much you take of it, sooner or later, you're going to come back off it. There's going to be a break, and then you feel bad. And you feel worse, depending on how much you took. And if you just... If you either don't do it at all, or if you keep it to such a small amount, you know, left wanting more is not a bad thing, it's not a bad state to be in. Left feeling like crap because you kept thinking you wanted or needed more, that is a bad state to be in. So, yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. So long. There's the button.